So good morning everybody, uh, welcome back to Be Here Now. Now today I'm doing something a bit sneaky um, and I'm looking at, I'm going for a walk down a little narrow strip of land between the River Mersey, which is over there and the Manchester Ship Canal, which is over here uh, at Runcorn and it goes for miles, it goes all the way to, uh, well past Ellesmere Port to where the, the ship canal eventually ends uh, in the Mersey estuary. Right, so this is the plan to walk down the entire length of the narrow strip of land between the Manchester Ship Canal and the River Mersey. The only access point to the whole thing is here, next to the old swing bridge in Runcorn, and it's also fenced off. So let me just start by saying, when I first set off on this little adventure, I didn't actually think I'd be able to access anything. And also I didn't know if it'd make a very interesting video. But to be honest, um, I've always wanted to venture down here and I would have done it anyway, whether I was filming or not. Now the first point of interest is the Old Key Lock, which gave access to Witness Dock, the terminus of the St. Helens Canal. Now near to the lock was the Manchester Ship Canal's Old Key Workshops, and this was where the dredgers were based, um, frequently removing silt from the canal's bed. So it's actually quite easy to cross this lock, it's all silted up and it's got a nice uh, grassy carpet down. Uh, anyway, this is the, the view up stream um, towards Manchester obviously and this is the lock. Look, look at the lock gates all rusted and rotten, not many years left to be honest. But they've been here for so long anyway, it's amazing. Um, but if I swing around this way, look at that view over there, that's the Silver Jubilee Bridge, the River Mersey in full flood. Um, more amazing rusty gates here and that seawall there I don't know if you can see that seawall that is what I'm going to be walking along and that's obviously between the canal and the river um, I don't know if you can tell but I'm a bit excited <laughs> I didn't think I'd get this far to be honest I've only just started but I didn't think I'd get this far um, so from here everything's just amazing to me <laughs> so let's go right, I'll just show you this gate there's the crank up there turn that look at this down here Crank, chain, opens the gate. Easy, simple. Um, bloody huge, these gates, though. Actually, if you look behind me, you can just see how narrow this uh, thing I'm walking on is, the wall between the canal and the river. Uh, it's just amazing, it's like a few paces wide. Now the reason that is, I mean, you think why doesn't the canal just enter the river here and then there you go, Bob's your uncle, you go into the sea. Well, it's because the Mersey estuary right here, or at least the Mersey here, is uh, so unreliable. It's, it silts up, it's very shallow, it's a lot shallower than it it looks um, and if you're in a big ocean going vessel it's just kind of no good um, to plus there's lots of sandbanks you've got to know your way you know what I mean <laughs> so it's just unreliable it's not use uh, it's not fit for purpose as a um, as a, a waterway for heavy shipping so they had to get the canal as close to the sea as they physically could um, and the earliest opportunity to get into the River Mersey where it was deep and was navigable is down at Ellesmere Port. So you get this crazy bit of canal where it comes down uh, from Manchester and it comes down into Runcorn and then just follows the river the entire way almost to Birkenhead really. Um, 
yeah it just shows like the geography of the Mersey wasn't really um, favorable for heavy boats but, yeah this is exciting now um, I honestly didn't think I'd get this far I honestly didn't think I'd get this far um, and yeah this is exciting uh, I kind of just want to get under the bridge because I feel like I'm in view of a lot of people um, but yeah check out this this is one unique view of the bridge look at that so the Mersey is so narrow here um, it meant that even in Victorian days bridges were able to span the distance the first being the Victorian viaduct now look at these old photos taken at the time of the ship canals construction you can see the viaduct and you might notice it's got that castle like design about it uh, now that's not actually meaningless um, as this old map of the area shows there used to be a small fort here now while the fort was long gone even uh, at the time this map was made uh, the fort itself was built in the year 915 by Ethelfled, the Lady of Mercia who wanted to fortify this northern tip of her kingdom against raiding Vikings uh, now it's Ethelfled that the viaduct is today named after And then in 1905 a transporter bridge was built and there's some cracking photos of it here uh, spanning the canal and the river between Runcorn and Widnes. In 1964 the first road bridge to cross the river here was built now known as the Silver Jubilee Bridge. It was a suspension bridge and the longest in Europe at the time. Now this photo is a beauty taken during the brief period after the completion of the suspension bridge and before the demolition of the transporter bridge. Look at that bridge! Look at it! How exciting is that? Amazing. I think I've got to that age now where bridges are exciting to me. Um, I've definitely reached some sort of uh, milestone in my life. Um, so that's the road bridge built in the 60s, I think the, the Silver Jubilee Bridge. Um, and this is the railway viaduct um, and a long train just has just gone over there and I just missed it on the camera um, but anyway I think it's called the Ethel Flader viaduct train good sign but yeah come on come on this is exciting and just for a bit of context this is upriver the Mersey Fiddler's Ferry Power Station, coal power station, and the Millennium Gateway Bridge. Um, the only other bridge for miles around that takes cars over the River Mersey is that one over there, and you've got to pay a toll for it. Very nice, very um, generous. Anyway, that's over there. So you can see here the Mersey, that's somewhere called West Bank over there, fully enough. This part of the Mersey is quite narrow and then it expands outwards vastly there into um, is that Wig Island over there? I really should have learnt a few names around it. Anyway, yes, so on we go before I lose uh, my chain of thought anymore. Right, so I'm being a bit presumptuous here, but this um, wooden uh, structure, um, it's very early in the morning, I can't use my words properly. Uh, I presume this is where ships would have pulled over to the side to let other ships pass or to have a think or something, because it's not really anywhere to unload or load goods. So I presume this kind of um, wood, wooden structure um, was just a bit of a pullover, yeah get out stretch your legs but I don't know anything um, about that type of thing so um, anyway I'm not, I've walked on it a little bit but I'm not stupid it's um, it's a bit like Indiana Jones on there so I'm gonna push on this is the part of the canal 
uh, where it bends round to the south um, towards the, um, well, towards loads of things. Let's go have a look. <laughs> Yeah, so this stretch is no man's land and these old photos show it during the early days when the canal was still being built. Uh, up there you've got a crane, you've got a building, boats moored at the mooring points and even a small train used in the construction process. Incredible pictures, beautiful pictures. I love all the detail in there. I love the, the little train in there working away. Um, but the whole thing, very, very interesting as it is, it's a far cry from what I was about to discover. Right, I'm currently lost in a uh, in a jungle. Um, literally, last time I spoke to camera and I talked about Indiana Jones. Well, now I am actually Indiana Jones. I've been battling through here for about half an hour. I've done about 50 meters. Uh, and it seems impenetrable ahead. This might actually be the end of my journey. That would really annoy me. Um, but it'd be quite upsetting as well. Uh, anyway. I'm going to have to keep battling through here. I wish I got a machete, but I don't. Um, yeah, so we'll see how we get on. Right, it's been about an hour of battling away here um, and you can see I've not really come very far at all from the bridge. An hour of going through this behind me. And this is a very narrow strip of land as well, so it's, I can't, I've got to be careful. I can't just go around things too quickly. Anyway, I've got this ahead of me. Which you probably can't tell is up to my chest height but i'm thinking if it gets that light there and then hopefully it'll be clear if not this might be the end of the road um because i just can't keep doing this for another mile or so right i'm calling it quits unfortunately um i got down to somewhere on that bend there um quite a way down but it was just it just kept going, there's, there's brambles and nettles and ferns up to here um, and the trouble is I just don't know how far it's going to be like that. So it's my fault I'm coming in the height of summer um, but anyway I'm going to call it quits there. At least I've managed to get a good look at the very first little bit of uh, this stretch. Um, obviously if you wanted another good look you'd have to go on the other side and wade through like the old oil refineries industrial units down towards Ellesmere but I don't want to do that today so I'm going to be happy with this um, and I am happy with this because this is quite impressive to be honest and um, yeah a bit of a disappointment I don't know what that sound is someone on the bridge anyway I, uh, a bit of a disappointment, but hey, these things happen, swings and roundabouts. Um, that's it then, so for this little video, unfortunately, um, not much to see, except a wonderful lock further down there. Um, and the bridges, so thanks very much for watching. See you again. Don't take me home. Please don't take me home. I'm a poor married man in search of peace I roam. I'm with you in anything you do, but
don't take me home, please don't take me home, don't, don't take me home, tell me what did I do to you, oh, I'm a little pity I'm a poor married man, in search of desire do, but don't take me home.